On one fateful and tragic day, Hajime Nagumo gets flung into the Orca's labyrinth. The said labyrinth is home to monsters that are far more powerful than anything he has ever encountered. Then, as he is fighting for his life against the killer bunnies, a bear monster appears. After the bear kills the rabbit threatening Hajime, it quickly turns its attention to him. He attempts to fight back and run as far as he could, however, the bear is too strong for him to deal with alone. It makes it impossible for Hajime to get out of this dreadful position. In the end, the situation leads to the bear severing his arm and eating it. Fortunately, for some reason, Hajime can flee by transmuting his way deep into the ground where the monsters reach. At that said place, he also finds a divinity stone that generates a constantly replenishing pool of ambrosia healing fluid. This allows him to survive any infection caused by his amputated arm. He began to experience memories in that cramped little area. Hajime's flashbacks indicate that he lacks any warrior expertise. It seems his sole genuine talent is for transmutation, the ability to control matter. It's the skill he used earlier while getting away from the bear monster. It is also made clear that everyone is painstakingly preparing for the raid while they are outside the labyrinth. During that time, Kaori also tells him that she is concerned about their raid and believes that anything could go wrong. Hajime reassures her though that everything will be okay. He tells her that all she needs to do is protect him if she thinks something dangerous may happen. When they enter the dungeon for the raid, one of his classmates touches a strange stone. As a result, they immediately get transported to an area where they encounter a vicious behemoth monster. Realizing his friends are in danger, Hajime decides to take on the enormous creature alone to buy everyone some time. Meanwhile, the rest of the class figured out how to flee. However, it later turned out that Hajime had been purposely thrown into the abyss by one of his classmates after attempting to save Kaori. Hajime encounters the bear creature mentioned before in the abyss. While he is still squeezed into the little area, he begins to crack from extreme hunger. He gets forced to start using traps to hunt the really powerful wolves to avoid going mad. After consuming one, the monster cells alter his DNA with the help of Ambrosia. The only thing keeping him alive is ongoing mending. The continuous tearing apart of his muscles is caused by the symbiosis of his DNA with the monster's DNA. Together with the healing effects of the Ambrosia, causes his body changes to make him considerably stronger. After changing, he continues to hunt monsters, devouring them to level up and acquire their physical and magical talents. He even builds his first handgun, Donner, using his transmutation talent and trial and error to build formidable weapons. Before hunting for a route further into the abyss, he finally chases and devours the bear abomination that ate his limb earlier. Upon entering to the palace, the party informed the king of Hajime's death since they believed he had already passed away. However, the king is reluctant to acknowledge the loss of a hero and forbade any more discussion of the occurrence. Kaori's buddy, Shizuku, explains through flashbacks that the Pope called their high school class and their instructor to this realm to serve as heroes. In humanity's battle against demons and monsters, there are three primary types of beings living in the world they are in right now. There are human beings, demons, and monsters. In addition, the demons commanded creatures that nearly put an end to humankind as they engage in constant combat with them. Therefore, the god of creation, called Ahit, adored by the Tortoise people, calls upon heroes to aid the kingdom. Ahit wants them to stop humanity from coming to an end. Also included in them are Hajime and the others. That's when they decided to enter the labyrinth one day during class even if it was against their teacher's wishes. Let's return to reality. Shizuku notices that one of their classmates, Hiyama, is acting a little differently. He does not, however, say anything when he tries to reassure himself that no one witnesses him strike Hajime. Turns out that Hiyama, who has a crush on Kaori, turned out to be the one who betrayed Hajime. He chose to turn on Hajime to get closer to Kaori. Meanwhile, in the labyrinth, Hajime continues on his trek until he ultimately arrives at a huge stone door. As he uses his abilities to attempt to unlock the door, he appears to have activated a security defense system. It brings the monster implanted into the walls to life. Given his increased strength, Hajime can kill the guardian monsters without using much of his powers. He then recovers keys from their bodies. Elsewhere, Kaori vows to strengthen herself so that she may return to the labyrinth and locate Hajime once again. It turns out she is still committed to finding him. Hajime enters the room as the enormous stone doors open. Inside, he encounters several strange things on the ceiling. He also discovers a little girl trapped in a crystal in the far corner of the room. He decides to abandon her because he believes that she must be a monster who got imprisoned for a reason. The girl, who claims to be an immortal vampire princess, tries to persuade Hajime that she is not who or what he believes her to be. 
She states that she got betrayed by her uncle. She says that he wants her dead for her position but struggles to kill her since she can regenerate. As a result, her uncle settled to seal her away in the end. After feeling pity for her, Hajime decides to liberate the girl from the crystal. After all, he knows what it feels like to have someone you trust turn on you. Hajime then asks for her name. She abandons her old name and asks him to give her a new one instead. Hajime then gives her the new name, Yue, which means the moon. Since the color of her golden hair reminds him of moonlight, Hajime is then hurt in the subsequent attack while protecting Yue. It appears that there's a monster in the room tasked with keeping an eye on Yue in case she manages to escape. Following its duties, the huge scorpion creature begins attacking Yue and Hajime. Yue consumes Hajime's blood while they attempt to combat the scorpion monster, which allows her to regain her energy and use her magic. She then creates a ball of blue mana and attempts to destroy the monster. Sadly, her initial strike fails. Because of this, Hajime devises a strategy and provides Yue with instructions on how to implement it. In the end, they were successful in killing the scorpion guardian. As per usual, Hajime immediately cuts open the creature and starts to consume its flesh. Hajime and Yue then spend some time talking about themselves and getting to know each other better. Hajime informs Yue that she is the last vampire since all vampires were supposed to have been wiped off 300 years ago during the massive battle. Hajime then asks her if she knows a way out after staying in the labyrinth for so long. Yue responds that she doesn't know either. However, she also explains that the labyrinth were built by the Mavericks. According to her, these Mavericks are powerful magic users who tried to defeat God but failed. As a result, they each created a labyrinth as a sanctuary against God's retribution. Yue even says that some of these Mavericks may still be alive on the deepest floors. To make the Schlagen weapon, Hajime transforms the scorpion shell and utilizes it as a material. Then Hajime explains to Yue how he got deceived. He also tells her that he no longer cares about his friends or the idea of returning to them. He reveals that all he wants is enough power to go back home. Since Yue no longer has a place to call home, he invites her to accompany him on his journey. Meanwhile, Hajime's friends decide to go through the maze. Hajime and Yue eventually reach a floor where a plant-like monster has infected and psychically possessed every dinosaur-looking monster. Since they believe they wouldn't be able to reach the surface if they had to battle every creature on the floor, they decide to search for the controller. Unfortunately, Yue gets infected during their search. On the other side, Hajime learns he's resistant to the virus because of one of the monsters he earlier consumed. With his resistance, he manages to slay the monster. After drinking Hajime's blood, Yue later shows love to him while she wears her birthday suit. A few days later, they arrive on the lowest floor where the final boss monster is waiting for them. It's a place that looks like a magnificent entrance filled with sparkling decorations. During that time, they believe that they have arrived at their destination. It doesn't take long for Hajime and Yue to get confronted by an ultimate challenge. It's in the form of a gigantic hydra-like beast with six heads. Each head is capable of different types of magic and worse, one is even capable of curing the others. Since the white head has the healing skill, the two decide to take it out first. It's the only way for them to avoid wasting their efforts by attacking the other heads only for them to heal back the damages inflicted on them. Unfortunately, they struggle to accomplish this. It seems that the other heads are exceedingly combative and strong too. Sure enough, every time the others get injured, they continue to persist since the white head keeps on healing them instantaneously. It all leads to Yue and Hajime having a harder time dealing with a monster than they expected it to. While they were battling, Yue gets distracted by the fear-inducing hypnosis of a second head. It shows her an illusion that she has returned to his crystal cage and is being held hostage once more. The most terrifying thing for her is seeing Hajime slowly walking away, leaving her alone once more. Even if it is all part of the hypnosis, she is so deeply immersed in it that she almost gets eaten. Fortunately for her, Hajime breaks her out of the illusion with a kiss. They then begin to fight back once again. This time, Yue is much more energetic than she was a while ago. Hajime then uses Schlagen to smash three heads, including the white head doing all the healing. Meanwhile, Yue uses her lightning magic powers to eliminate the remaining three. When they're close to the finish line and think everything is okay, they decide to relax for a bit after a tiring fight. Much to their surprise, a seventh head appears and attacks them. Hajime goes to defend Yue, but his Schlagen shatters and he also gets severely injured. Seeing Hajime unconscious, Yue drags him to safety and attempts to strike with his gun. Even though he is unconscious, Hajime hears Yue weeping and somehow enhances his speed. 
It even reaches a point where he activates Ultra Instinct and invades all blows. He eventually throws explosives around the area, causing the roof to fall on the head and allowing Yue to kill it with lightning. Hajime then collapses from exhaustion as the final door opens. Meanwhile, Hajime's instructor, Aiko Hatayama, who has also been summoned as a hero, debates with the Pope who insists on re-entering the labyrinth. The Pope promises to send only voluntary students as long as Aiko continues to use her fertility magic to help the kingdom's poor agriculture. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.